start recording. I'm going to calibrate my pen real quick since it was acting up. And then we'll jump right in. Come on. Calibrate. Do you guys in high school have like those smart boards where they'd have to do this like all the damn time? So yeah, let's get started. So today, a lot of things we need to do. Um, I'm not going to get through all of it. So let's start with some announcements, first of all. Uh, OK, so exam is 11-1, which is Thursday. And uh, there's going to be a homework due as well. Uh, on Thursday, and it's through chapter seven three, right? So everything on the homework um, is fair game <coughs> for the exam. All right, so that means the chapters we're going to be going over are going to be from like whatever, like four six to seven three, I think. And then if you've never seen something in there, we're probably not going over it. So like, uh, like the middle of chapter six, which is like base, like kernel, image, range, like those types of stuff. And then some of the, I think that's pretty much it. So um, that's what's going to be on the exam. Uh, number two, review session. So here is the plan. Um, I'm not getting through everything I want to, just mainly because a lot of these examples are very involved. And so I was thinking about having two. Um, one on Sunday, this would be like a mini lecture on uh, linear transformations plus eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Uh, so if you remember last week, or last week, last time we did this, I essentially broke up like a three hour review session into like two into like a lecture part and then a, uh, a problems part so let's just split this up into two review sessions so on Sunday I'll go through um, whatever I don't get to today and then on Monday um, we're going to be going over problems and so uh, rooms still to be determined times are still be to determined but I will email you guys that by this afternoon because otherwise I can't get a room uh, if I don't reserve it by this afternoon. So, all right. So, okay. So that's that. Three uh, uh, practice problems um, will be posted tonight. I still need to get a hold of Navi, and then I had one more. I don't remember what it was. Um, oh, yeah, I do. Uh, so recitation next week. Um, uh, feel free to come on Wednesday. Because no one's going to be here on Friday. Uh, we'll probably cancel it based on what the turnout was last time. So, uh, yeah, so you can come to Wednesday. We're gonna be, I'm going to be holding like a review session, as much of a review session as you can in 50 minutes on Wednesday. Um, but what most likely will happen is that I'll just go over stuff I think should be on your cheat sheet which for this exam is mostly like examples, I think. So, all right, so that's gonna be uh, the plan. And so those are the announcements. Uh, any, any questions before we start? Yeah, Wait, sorry, when, is it the same time on Wednesday? Yeah, it's the same time. They're, they're listed on my website, okay. the locations. It's not this room. Um, I will warn you guys that that room is smaller than this room. And so if all of you guys show up on Friday at 9 a.m., uh, there's not going to be seats if you show up late. So I just keep that in mind. I think the 8 a.m. will have seats, though. Um. Okay, so let's jump in then. Uh, matrix of a linear transformation.
matrix of a linear transformation. That is what we're going to be talking about right now. And so what, what's the motivation behind this? Well, every linear transformation Uh, can be represented by a matrix. So if you have a map, T, that sends some input vector space V to some output vector space W, then what is this equivalent to? Well, this T is really equivalent to some matrix A. And they want that times some vector w and you'll uh, it's times some vector v and you'll get some vector w back right where um, little v is in big v and little w is a vector in big w okay so essentially this linear transformation can be represented by matrix multiplication and what else well i mean uh, this is how i like to think of it but the book does it this way um, they say that T of a vector V is equal to AV, which is equivalent to what I wrote above. So, that's what a matrix of linear transformation is. So, let's take a look at some examples. All right. And so, there are three types of problems that they'll ask you for a matrix of linear transformation. We're only going to get through one of them. Um, and it's because we're going to do two examples on one of them, and then uh, everything else will either cover Sunday or refer you to um, the videos. But so, for example, this first one, we're going to be given a map, find the matrix of transformation, and this is going to be the linear transformation matrix of a linear transformation. video one. So similar examples will be covered in that video. But I feel like the, since this is the most basic one, it really pays to understand this one before we branch out into any of the others. So you have T from M to R to R2. Okay. So this is our, that's, that's what our map does. And our map T of A uh, is equal to Trace A, comma, trace A. Okay, so we have a map. There's a map. It takes some two by two matrix and then it spits out the trace of the matrix. Okay, and just a refresher, because there are some people that don't remember what trace is. Um, trace of like some matrix is just equal to the diagonal entries all added up. So, so if you have like A B C D F G H I, then the trace is going to be A plus E plus I. Okay. So that's what trace is. Um, and OK, so now what we want to do is that, OK, we want to express this as a map, right? So uh, OK, so we have a map. And now we want to express it as a matrix. So we need to set up some kind of matrix. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what dimension is this matrix going to be? And in order to find that out, we need to find out what the dimensions of our input and output vector spaces are. So what is the dimension of? My input, M2R. Two. Uh, not quite. All right, so what is M2R? It's two by two real matrices, right? So if I were to write a basis for it. Oh, one, one, zero. Well, yeah, so one, zero, zero, zero would be a basis element. But how many elements would there About be? Two. Mm, no, four, four right? So the dimension's four, and that's because right each basis element, the standard basis you can think, is you have one, zero, 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 and then you just move that one around. 
And this is also something I told you guys to remember, or at least have on your cheat sheet, is that you need to know the dimension of like MNR in general, which is n squared, right? And I believe we talked about that in class. So it should be in a video recording somewhere. OK, more simply, what's the dimension of R2? Two. 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 <laughs> All right, no tricks there. Um, so now what do I have? So now I have my dimension of my input vector space. Uh, OK, so I take the dimension of my output vector space. And that's the number of rows. And the dimension of my input vector space is the number of columns. right? And the way you have to think about that is because M4, uh, M2R is my input vector space. So I would be multiplying here by a four by one matrix, uh, four by one matrix, right? Where we unravel the two by two matrix to a column vector. And then I would be multiplying by a four by one. So this dimension needs to match up, okay? And this is always gonna happen. Your output dimension is gonna be the number of column. Uh, num output dimension is number of rows and input dimension is number of columns. All right, anyways. So we got that figured out. And if you're colorblind, sorry for the choice of colors. Um, so, OK, uh, what's next? So now we got that. Now what we want to do is we want to find a basis for the output vector space. All right. and. Does someone want to give me, so we, we need to find a basis for R2. And it can be any basis we want, but we obviously should choose like the easiest ones to work with. Okay, so what should my basis for my output vector space be? Did you say your output? Yeah, output. Yeah, exactly. One zero zero one. So one zero and zero one. And so what does this tell me? Essentially, this tells me like this first row needs to be whatever entry is in the first tuple of my output. And then the second row tells me what the entry of the second tuple is in my output. But generally speaking, um, we're so, so right now we're just dealing with standard bases. This isn't going to be much of a problem at all. Okay, so this will be pretty intuitive for, for, for standard bases, and you don't have to worry about it too much. It's only when we get to change of basis where like this thing like actually kind of matters. Okay, so now, uh, okay, so we did that. Uh, so we found the dimension of the matrix. We found the we found a basis for our output vector space. Now we need to find a basis for our input vector space. All right, which is M2R. And what's the basis for this vector space? Yeah. You know, like the thing you were saying before. Exactly. Exactly. So 1, 0, 0, 0, comma, 0, 1, 0, 0, and then put a 1 there, and you put a 1 down here. Right, and if it's blank, it just means zero. Okay, so that's the basis for my input vector space. So now what do I do? Well, the matrix, uh, we find a matrix, but we need to see where each basis element is mapped to. So what does that mean? That means that I have to feed in every single basis element into my map and see what the output is. So let's do that. So we got T of 1, 0, 0, 0. So T of 1, 0, 0, 0, what is it? Well, what's my map? Right, my map takes my input, which is a matrix, right, and outputs in a tuple of two numbers, the trace and the trace. Okay? So 
if my input is 1, 0, 0, 0, then what's my output going to be? Uh, not 2, 2. 1, 1, right? Because the trace of 1, 0, 0, 0, right? We sum the diagonal entries. That's 1. And then this out, the other one is also the trace of A as well. So it's 1, 1. All right, and then now 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So we just got to keep on plugging away. Um, what's the trace of this matrix? Zero. So my matrix, uh, my entry, my output is going to be zero, zero. Continuing, T of just that guy on the bottom left, this should also be zero, zero. And then T of zero, zero, uh, zero, 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 one. What is that? Yeah, one, one. Right, since so the trace is one, one. Okay, now what? Now, for our columns, we need to plug these in. So this will be t of 1, 0, 0, 0, which is this guy. All right? And so we just plug that in our column. Okay? And so essentially, this tells me plug the first entry in my tuple in, which is a 1. And then the second guy is plug the second entry in right here. So that's also a 1. Um, but you can just write it as 1, 1. All right, now what? Now I want to find trace of 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, which is this next guy. So that's 0, 0. Then trace of the third entry, which is trace of 1 on the bottom left. That's also 0, 0. And then uh, here, the last guy, uh, let's use a different color, which is trace of 1 on the bottom right. It's one one. Okay, and so we're done. This is the matrix of transformation uh, right here. Any questions? All right, so yeah, so this is how you find uh, matrix transformation. And this one was fairly simple, OK? So this one really isn't that bad. Your numbers aren't that bad. Your map isn't the most difficult. So let's look at um, another example then. Did I number, number these? Yeah, so this is one. OK, so number two, whoa, what happened? Number two, uh, let me take a look at fall 2014 final. All right. Question is the following. Let T takes V to V be a linear map. OK. Uh, the trace of T is defined as the trace of M. So this is really weird. M, B, B, T of T. And so what is this monstrosity? Uh, it's the matrix of transformation with respect to a basis B. Okay, and then now what? You need more information to do this problem. Uh, so let V equal P3, and then the map is T of P is X squared P triple prime minus X squared P double prime minus P prime plus P. And you want to find the trace of T.
Okay, so essentially what you have to do is, okay, here a, a problem is that the basis B is not given. All right, this is not given. Um, so if, if, if the problem doesn't specify what bases you're in, what should you always assume? Any ideas? All right, so if you're not given a basis, right, essentially any basis goes, right? So, but it doesn't make sense to use anything other than the standard bases because everything's just a lot more difficult than the standard basis, right? If you have your standard basis, you have, like for R3, it would just be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? And so you're, you're comfortable with using those bases. Um, so you always want to default to standard bases um, if it doesn't specify what your bases are. So, okay, so uh, it's not given. So uh, we're going to assume standard bases. Okay, so that means when we go and we find our map or the matrix of our map, Okay, the first thing, remember, is to figure out what the dimensions of this map are. So we have to find the dimension of the input and we have to find the dimension of the output vector space. However, they're the same thing, so this is going to be a square matrix, right? And we just need to find the dimension of our input vector space, which is P3. So what's the dimension of P3? That's yeah, 4, right? So the dimension of Pn is n plus 1, so this dimension is 4. Okay, and so this is going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. That's cool. Uh, now what? Now we need now just the basis for the output. Just to keep track of things. So our output vector space is also P3. So we need a basis for our output. Yeah. So what's P3? P3 is the polynomial of uh, degree 3 or less. Okay, so we need a basis for our output vector space, which is P3 itself. Uh, and so we're assuming standard bases. So what's the standard basis of P3? Right, but in terms of like polynomials, what would they be? So x is an element. x cubed is an element. x squared and the constant term, right? So instead of listing them out in that dress, like that order, um, we're going to put them from decreasing to increasing. All right, so that's the standard basis for PQ, uh, P3. OK, next step is to find the basis for the output, the no, basis for the input. But it's just the same thing, right? Because we're in the same vector space. And so now we got to see where these bases are set to. So now I need to see what happens when I plug in t of 1 into my math. OK. So what do I do? Well, OK, so t of 1 is equal to x squared times p triple prime. So I plugged in t into p, right? So p is equal to 1. So here I'm taking the third derivative of 1. What is that? 0, right? All right. Now what do I do? Minus x squared times the second derivative of 1, which is 0 minus the derivative of 1, which is 0, plus p, but what's p? 1. Why is p equal to 1? Uh, because we're taking t of 1, right? And so 1 just went in for p. Oh, OK. All right, and then now we need to find t of the other 
basis elements, so T of X. All right, so now we get X squared times the third derivative of X, which is zero, minus X squared times the second derivative of X, zero, minus the derivative of X, one plus p x sorry um at the top where it says t of t equals yeah that x that's x squared yeah x squared p triple prime yeah. so 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 what it's actually doing is that it's just this is like the coefficient so this is like a differential equation uh -huh. um and this is just like the coefficient on the differential equation. Oh. So it's x squared times whatever the derivative oh, of this differential equation is. So the variables are like the p. Basically. Right, exactly. Yeah, the variable is the p. So that's what you want to think of. Yeah. OK. So. There's that. Okay, now we need t of x squared is equal to x squared times the third derivative of x squared, which is zero. zero. All right, minus x squared times the second derivative of x squared. So you get first derivative is 2x, second derivative is 2, minus uh, just the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then plus x squared, which was the polynomial itself. And so what you get here, you get negative 2x minus x squared. Right, there are some like terms you can combine, namely these two. And then finally, t of x cubed. All right, it's x squared times the third derivative of x cubed. Six minus x squared times the second derivative, which is six x, minus the first derivative, three x squared, plus x cubed. And so you also got some like terms here. That and that. That and that. And so this ends up being three x squared minus five x cubed. Okay, now what do we do? We go back up to our matrix and we start plugging stuff in. So here we go. This is gonna be T of one, all right? It's equal to one. So that tells me, all right, this, well, this one tells me that all constants go in the first row. So this is one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, and then T of X is negative one plus X. So T of X, negative 1, 1, 0, 0. T of X squared is negative 2X minus X squared. So T of X squared. And so no constant term, negative 2X, negative 1X squared, 0. And then lastly, T of X cubed is that. So 0, 0, 3, negative 5. And what's the trace? The trace is 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 5. Trace equals negative 4. OK, any questions? So you can see how these problems are quite involved. Can I look back at the, um, like the actual question? Yeah. So, yeah. so what does, um, could you explain the M of B, B? It's just some notation BS they had that semester. Oh, okay. So you shouldn't need to worry about it, because if you haven't seen it this semester, Davi's probably not using that notation. But that's just, that just meant the matrix of the transformation. That's what the M was. So it's essentially what I called A. Like this A is what 
there we're calling MBD. Okay. Yeah. Did we come up with Q of Q or? No, that's given. So, so everything above here was just given to you. But everything in color was not given to you. So that's, we had to figure those things out. Anything else? Yeah. I'm just curious, what did they define in the initial transformation V to V instead of just saying P3 to P3? Yeah, it's just, it's just how the problem was written. <laughs> like, sometimes you get really poorly worded problems, and this is one of them. Like, if I don't go through this problem and it's like on your homework, everyone's going to be like, what the hell is this? Because it's just like, it's, it's, you have that MDB crap, and then you have like how this is all defined. So, okay. So that's linear transformations when you're given a map with respect to your standard bases. So what am I not covering um, today? Uh, so first of all, you can't read my handwriting. Uh, so first of all, we're not covering, uh, if you're given random inputs, and output and the corresponding outputs. Find the matrix of transformation. So we're not doing this. Um, this is matrix of Lin trans video two. Essentially, you can also find a matrix of linear transformations if I just throw a bunch of inputs at you and throw a bunch of outputs at you and then just like go find the matrix. All right, you can do that. Um, change of basis is a special type of this problem. Okay, so change of basis is essentially, you have a bunch of random inputs, which are your original basis, and then you have a bunch of random outputs which are your new basis, and you just have to find the matrix that goes between them. The second type are uh, matrices of linear transformations um, of maps between uh, vec different vector spaces with non-standard bases. So it's essentially what we did today, except you don't have standard bases anymore. You have whack bases, all right? And what you do there then is you actually just find the linear transformation like we did now, and then you also have to find the change of basis matrix, and you just multiply them together. But again, not, not, we're not getting into that today um, because we only have 15 minutes left. All right, so now let's hop over eigenvalues, eigenvectors. All right, so here's how I think about eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Um, so if a linear transformation has a representing matrix A, which is square, so n by n. All right, so if a linear transformation has a representing matrix n by n, then the eigenvectors are the inputs that are stretched by the map and the eigenvalues are uh, how much the eigenvectors are stretched. All right, so visually, right, so you have an eigenvector and you have some kind of map, right? It either gets stretched, so it goes like, whoop, right? So it can get stretched like that. Um, the other way it can get stretched is that 
it can like go in the opposite direction, so that's fine. So if you have eigenvectors like this, and the map makes them go like that, like that's fine. Um, what is not an eigenvector is any vector that gets like rotated. All right, so that they, they have to be stretched in one way or the other. So that's the, like the geometric interpretation of formally, you got AV is equal to lambda V, and so V is the eigenvector, and lambda is the eigenvalue. <clears throat> okay. Two important facts. And pretty much all theoretical questions from this chapter stem from these two facts. Number one, product of the eigenvalues. Producted. Product of the eigenvalues is equal to the determinant of the matrix. Number two, sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of the matrix. Okay, so what does this mean? All right, so you get questions that are like, all right, if you know that the determinant, okay, if you know that a matrix is invertible, what can't be one of the eigenvalues? Zero, right? Because if an eigenvalue is zero, then the determinant is zero, which means the matrix is not invertible, but you were told that the matrix was invertible. So those are like the type of questions that you, like, you might get on like a true-false. Um, you have to be able to tie all those things together. Okay, so that's what I meant by like everything stems from these facts. These are really important facts. So now let's find some examples of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I'm only going to get through one example today. So a is equal to 5, negative 12, oh, negative 5, negative 12, 0, 1, 2, 0, 4, 10, 1. Okay, and then so step one is to find lambdas using a, uh, the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. So determinant, here's a minus lambda i. You subtract lambdas off from the diagonal. minus lambda. Okay. So in the determinist chapter, we kind of like try to force cofactor expansion on you guys because, uh, well, if you want to row reduce this, be my guest, but it's going to get you nowhere. Uh, so we're going to cofactor expand and we're going to cofactor expand along this last guy on the bottom because you got to call them zeros there. So what does this end up being? This is equal to negative 1 to the 3 plus 3. And then 1 minus lambda times the determinant of 5 minus lambda. This is negative 5 minus lambda. Uh, negative 12, 1, 2 minus lambda. 
Where'd you get the three plus three? Uh, this guy is the third row, third column. All right, what is this? This is equal to uh, 1 minus lambda times negative 5 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda, plus 12. Okay, and then 1 minus lambda. This junk on the inside, it simplifies to lambda squared plus 3 lambda plus 2. So what you got to do is you got to foil it out and then you got to add that 12. And then this simplifies 1 minus lambda, lambda plus 1, lambda plus 2. And what do we want this to be equal to? Zero, zero. Yeah, 0. <clears throat> And just as a side note, this is called the characteristic polynomial. Didn't you know that for like true or false questions or whatever? Like that, that's called the characteristic. Yeah, yeah, no, this is a very common name. That yeah. So let's let's start it. It's a, it's it, it's a very common name that comes up. I'll, I'll sometimes refer to, like, so determinant of a minus lambda i, that's the characteristic polynomial. Okay, cool. So now what? So now we just got to solve for the lambdas here. So we got lambda equals uh, 1, negative 1, negative 2. Step 2. Is uh, you want to find the eigenvectors eigen using the lambdas. And what are eigenvectors? Well, they satisfy a minus lambda i times v is equal to 0. And so they're, they're going to be the v's. Those are your eigenvectors. And how do you get here? Well, essentially, right, remember the definition was a v equals lambda v. So if you subtract lambda from both sides, or subtract lambda v from both sides, you get a v minus lambda v is 0. And then if you factor out that v from the right-hand side, you get a minus lambda i times v is equal to 0. And the i appears because a is a matrix, and you can't just subtract a constant from the matrix. Okay, so now this is casework. So lambda equals 1. Let's do some casework. Uh, so you go back up to this guy, and you plug in lambda equals 1 into the lambdas, and then you see what that gets you. So you get negative 6, negative 12, 0, 1, 1, 0, 4, 10, 0. So this is the a minus lambda i part. All right. And essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to solve this augmented matrix, right? So you got the zero vector here. And then now you got your solution V1. It's just going to be the null space of A minus lambda I. I'm pretty sure this is something that Davi has just hammered in multiple times in class. All right. So your, your eigenvector is going to be the solution to the null space of A minus lambda I. And so what is an eigenvector, or how do you find an eigenvector? I mean, you can do things like you can like row reduce, but what you really want to get good at is you really want to just get good at eyeballing eigenvectors. So this is going to be an exercise in eyeballing right here. Um, so what happens is you notice, hey, look, this, the first column always multiplies the first entry, right? The second column always multiplies the second entry, and then the last column always multiplies the last entry. So what I can see is that, hey, look, if I let, or let's not do that. 
if I let this be 0, 0, 1, that's going to be an eigenvector. Right? Because the first column is always going to be multiplied by 0, which is going to get me this is 0 right here. Right? Well, this first, so let's just go in order. So this is 6 times 0 plus 12 times 0 plus 0 times 1, which is 0. Right? Since they all just got killed by the zeros everywhere. All right? And if you go down each row, that's going to happen for each row. Right? The first two columns are going to be multiplying by zeros. And then the last column is going to be 0 times 1. Is everyone OK with that? Does everyone see like, why we can just like, look at it? Yeah. Okay, so you can like, pick anything as long as it's like, if right, right, right. it to 0. Yeah, exactly. So, right, so we did like 0, 0, 1, right? and then it's like, 0. So this could have been like 5. This could have been like 37. It doesn't matter what it is, but we choose one okay. because uh, it's the easiest. That's okay. the simplest one. So oh, we can't pick like the origin, right? No, yeah, yeah. So eigenvectors can never be zero. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's look at lambda equals negative one. So here we get negative four. Negative 12, 0, 1, 3, 0, 4, 10, 2. Here's V2. So let's do the same thing. Let's try to eyeball some eigenvectors. Um, so what can we see? Well, this first row. Right, 4 times this guy plus 12 times this guy. And then the last guy is always going to be 0, right? Because it's 0 times something. That has to be 0. So what does that tell me about the first entry here and the second entry here? Well, they have to be non-zeros. Well, yeah. Well, no, that's that's that, that that wasn't what I was trying to get at. But yeah, they have to cancel each other out, right? Exactly. So the greens multiplied each other plus the blues multiplied each other have to multiply, have to cancel each other out. All right. So now what you have to do is you kind of just have to like assign values randomly. Um, it, I I hate doing this, but essentially, what if we let this guy be one? OK, yeah, uh, not, 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 not that fast. But yeah, so this guy has to be negative 3. Right? Because you see then that negative 3 times 4 is 12, right? And then here, that's a plus, that's a minus 12, right? And then this guy's always going to be 0, so we can't figure out what this is yet. So that's going to be 0. All right, and this also works for row 2. Right? You can see that in row 2. 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 3 times 1 is 3. So you get negative 3 plus 3. That's going to get you 0. OK, now the hard part, well, not really hard part, but now you have to find what the last entry is. right? And to do that, we use our last row. Right? So what do I have? Well, here I have 4 times negative 3. So that's negative 12. And then I have 10 times 1, which is plus 10. And then now I have 2 times something is equal to 0. And so if we solve this equation out, you see that this unknown, you get like x3 is equal to 1. Right, by solving that equation. And so we know that this then has to be 1. So then this is going to be an eigenvector as well. 
All right, so negative 3, 1, 1. And then we're out of time, but lambda equals negative 2. Negative 3, 12, 0. 1, 4, 0. 4, 10, 3. All right, let's see if we can eyeball this one real quick. Any ideas? Uh, oh, this is a negative 12. So yeah, so negative 4, 1, 2. Right, and you can verify it because here you get positive 12, here you get negative 12, so that's zero. And then here you get negative 4, positive 4, that's 1, uh, so that's negative 4 plus 4, that's 0. And then down here, negative 16 plus 10, so that's negative 6. And then finally, you got negative 6 plus 6, so you get 0. So that's going to be my last eigenvector. And so now you got three eigenvectors. Um, I guess that's the point of this question. You can like diagonalize your matrix, whatever. Um, but we'll talk about that another time. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so is the eigenvector like these three, or is it like these three multiplied by the respective eigenvalues? This, these are eigenvectors, okay. right? So these are the vectors. Yeah. Um, sometimes you'll be asked to find a basis for the eigenspace. And then these three vectors will form the, the span of these three vectors forms the basis. So when do you use the eigenvalues other than to find the vectors? You essentially just use them to find the vectors. That's the only Yeah, that's that and then like this like theoretical crap up here okay. is when you will use the eigenvalues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Also, if you like for some reason can't eyeball this during the test, like it's you can just solve. You can just solve for the null space. Row reduce. row reduce and solve for the null space. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so that's it for this week. Here are the announcements at the beginning of class. Uh, you can take a look at them. You can also watch the video. Um, that will be post. That that will be posted uh, later on today. All right. So I'll see you guys next week. You can come on Wednesday if you would like. Sorry. I'm going to grade them today. They'll be they'll be at the review session. Okay. I I mean, then you can pick up my like office hours next week or something like that. So.